Ooh, do I want to go over, oh, private property. Uh, this might be private property. I don't even know. I'm just going to keep going, I guess. Uh-oh. Hopefully this guy doesn't own this land. I didn't think this battery was gonna come in until Thursday, but it's here right now. I'm gonna install this again because if I actually use this, I wouldn't have to be replacing this in the first place. Oh, my fingers are too fat for this. Well, moment of truth, this is gonna be an extra hard start. Well, I wasn't planning on moto vlogging today, but since the bike is out, running strong now, might as well, right? Woo! All right, what is up, everyone? I switched up my helmet setup a little bit. Hopefully we're sounding clear, looking clear. I never actually did a video of my moto vlogging helmet setup. So maybe I'll have to show you guys that at the end of the video. No, I will. I'll show you guys how I have this whole thing set up at the end of the video. So I'm headed up into the coal mining region or a coal mining region of Pennsylvania. And I'm just gonna get lost. I think this is a pretty good social distancing activity. I don't know why I didn't get the bike out sooner. I guess just because it was dead and wouldn't start. But yeah, I picked up that battery on Amazon for like $24. It's not going to last very long, but it's enough to get me out and riding. That's for sure. So the DRZ is good, but as you guys know, I don't really ride it. Anytime I do ride it, you guys get a video of it. I've got 1,145 miles on it. This thing is still pretty much brand new. It's a 2018, if you guys have never seen this bike before. 400 Supermoto. Don't have a whole lot done to it other than aesthetics. I got the Zeta Bark Busters up here with the turn signals integrated into it. I swapped out the front end for a KTM style headlight and kind of just retrofit the stock halogen light inside of there. I did a front fender. Acerbis or something like that. I forget what that was called. I got that on Amazon. I did TST industry turns in the rear integrated tail light. And yeah, this bike is super fun. Another thing that I don't know if I've ever mentioned is this seat down here. The guys at Seat Concepts reached out to me a while ago and you've probably seen this seat in videos, but I don't know if I ever mentioned it before. They make a ton of different seats for a bunch of different bikes, uh, like motocross and even just road bikes, like the DRZ, stuff like that. And this thing is super, super comfortable. So I just wanted to give a shout out to them. They sent this out. Weren't looking for a review or anything, but I'm here to tell you that I've been riding on this for 
about a thousand miles and it's super comfortable. Everything about the DRZ is really comfortable. You get an upright seating position, you're sitting kind of tall. I still love this bike, I just don't really ride as much as I used to. Now a bunch of my friends who I used to ride with, I noticed that they're starting to buy motorcycles again, which is cool. However, we all live in like different parts of the country. I shouldn't say country, different parts of the East Coast. We all live like an hour apart from each other. So unfortunately, I'm not really doing any group rides or anything like that. But hey, it's still fun to get out and just cruise around and get lost. Let's go back this way. I'm pretty sure this road turns into a dirt road eventually. Or maybe a stone road. I guess we'll find out. So while I'm back here getting lost for no reason, uh, I wanted to talk about the vlog yesterday. It was great. I really enjoyed doing it, which is why I'm vlogging back to back. Got the camera out again today. And like I mentioned in that video, like this is something that I want to do. I'm actually excited to throw a camera on and show you guys what I'm doing with my life. Although it's not a whole lot. Like, yes, this is exciting to some people, but it's not some like crazy over the top vlog. It's just kind of hanging out and giving myself a way to talk to you guys. Ooh, look at this road. I wonder where that goes. So it was cool to hear all the feedback. I mean, I really love all of the comments that I've gotten. Everyone kind of agreeing with me or just kind of giving their feedback like, yeah, man, do, do you. Whatever you want to do, it's YouTube. And that's kind of what I preach on the regular. There were, however, a few people who took offense to what I said right in the beginning of that video. I'll leave a link for it up in the corner if you haven't watched the video yet. But to anyone who took offense to that, they like really snapped back and said some pretty terrible things. And those people I typically just block from the comment section. So they're just talking to a brick wall essentially for the rest of eternity. Ooh, do I want to go over, oh, private property. Uh, this might be private property. I don't even know. I'm just going to keep going, I guess. So to the people who got offended by me talking about how everyone is replaceable at their job and basically not to take life too seriously, maybe you should kind of calm down a little bit and think about why that offended you. I'm not here to preach gospel and tell you guys how to live your life, but if you took offense to anything that I said, honestly nothing I said was offensive at all. I just kind of made that video to help people think a little bit about their lives and how they're spending their time and things like that. I think about it a lot. Now that I have a lot of this free time, I mean, even before that, I was contemplating everything. I think about this stuff a lot because I've made some pretty drastic decisions over the past like year and a half, two years really since I started my YouTube channel. There were also people commenting who maybe weren't offended by what I said, but they thought I was complaining. And I got a lot of comments like, oh, you whiny millennial, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you guys sound stupid. Um, if you listen to what I said, I was not complaining at all. I was actually doing the opposite. I was saying, hey, I was kind of in a bad mood, wasn't talking about it at all. I was kind of in a funk. And I did something to change that. So I kind of made that video as like a sort of motivation to help other people just to say like, hey, you're in control of your own life. There are very, very few things that you have no control over in your life. It may seem like you're kind of locked down and I understand when people were saying, oh, well, I have to work for a paycheck. I have a family to support. 100%, I get that. And I applaud you for doing that. You want to make a better life for your wife, kids, family, whatever. That is super important. However, if you are truly unhappy at whatever you're doing, maybe you're working a desk job nine to five like I was for a while, you absolutely have the power to change that. You just got to put in work on your own time to get out away from that. I'm super thankful for my job now and what I do, everything with marketing and 
making videos and doing all of this fun stuff. It's great. Absolutely no complaints at all. I'm extremely thankful for everyone who watches my videos and enjoys them, supports what I do, everyone who likes and comments. But this kind of life didn't come free. I mean, if you go back and watch my videos from early on, I was working nine to five, nine to six sometimes. And I was traveling all over the country and constantly uprooting my life to get a paycheck to continue living and I don't know what I was chasing really. I guess I'd never really thought about the idea of just living to be happy. I was more worried about living to get a paycheck and acquire material things. I guess some people would say I've become woke because I don't really care about that stuff anymore. Could I go out and buy a brand new sport bike and go riding with my friends? Sure. But that's not what makes me happy. Like, <laughs> doing this stuff makes me happy and I'm doing it by myself, which is fine. Uh-oh. Hopefully this guy doesn't own this land. Okay, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm saying is I worked after work, after my normal job, a lot. Like, I did everything that I'm doing now, but in my free time to build it to a point where I could do what I do for myself and make a living. I might not make as much money as I did working in a corporate job, corporate environment. It's not stable, that's for sure. There's no real job security with what I do now. But I will absolutely take that pay cut and live a happy life rather than slaving over something where I was just selling my time to make money, to make a living. Anyway, that's enough preaching, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully that sort of clarified for anyone who was mad at yesterday's video. I can't believe people get mad about stuff on the internet like that still. It's like, hey man, this content is free. Stuff like this is basically just like a podcast. You could listen to this in your headphones, while you're driving around, locked in your home, throw it on your TV during quarantine. But hope everyone is doing well. <laughs> Even the people who don't like me. hills in a turn make you wobble when you fly over them you know what instead of making this an hour-long video because most of these moto vlogs could easily turn into like podcast length hour-long videos I'm gonna head back home and give you guys a rundown of the moto vlogging setup like I mentioned all right guys, back at home, and I talked about this in the past, but never brought a full video on it. So here's just a quick like 60 second rundown of my helmet and how I have it set up for moto vlogging. For starters, the helmet is an Icon variant, which is a super popular helmet in the super moto community, as well as moto vlogging in general. This is like the stereotypical moto vlogging helmet. I of course have the all black, matte black everything with the smoked windscreen and now this is the newer setup that i've been trying previously i was doing moto vlogs with a gopro hero session i believe it was the session five right here i have a gopro 7 black i simply have this thing mounted up front here with a sticky gopro mount i had to remove some of the material from underneath the visor here that way it would actually stick and then i will sort of deconstruct this thing as we go that way you have a better view of the inside there we go. So I have the GoPro mic adapter Velcroed into the top here right next to the mount where I mount the camera. This thing just plugs right into the side of whatever camera you're using. And then in the back here, I have a lapel mic and I will try to leave a link to this in the description down below. It's really just a mic that I got off of Amazon and I ran it down the back side of this vent here, electrical taped it to the back side of my helmet and then ran it down into the pads. Now I ran the wire through the pads up here to the front chin piece here. And if you take a peek inside right here, you will see a little fuzzy dead cat and that is the lapel mic right there. So it sits 
right about here next to my chin. And I think it sounds pretty decent. It's a really simple and easy setup. And there are a few downsides to this, but moto vlogging isn't my full-time thing. So this is just a really simple and easy setup. One of the downsides would be that if you're using a Hero 7 Black or something like this, this camera is a little bit bigger than the Session, so it doesn't allow you to open your windscreen all the way. A lot of people see this and they think, oh, well, you can't even see out the front. And in reality, when you're riding, your eyes are right about here. You're not looking through like the center of a shield. They're not like sunglasses. And the reason I prefer it up here as opposed to a chin mount is because I can see what's going on on the screen. I can see if my mic is okay. I can check battery levels. I can see the positioning of it. I can see how long I've been recording and I can start and stop it really easily. Down here on the chin, it would probably give it a better view. However, like I mentioned, I'm not doing this full time. So this is a quick, simple, and easy way to run a moto vlogging setup. So that's all that I had. If you guys have any questions on this, I don't know what you would even ask, but let me know in the comments down below. And I think that's where I'm gonna end the vlog for today. So I appreciate you guys leaving feedback on the previous video. I'm looking forward to talking with you guys some more in the comment section. I do actually read every single comment that is posted. So even if I don't reply, I still appreciate all that you guys are saying. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week and there are a lot more vlogs coming soon. So as always, thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.